Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at something that we haven't looked at in a good few weeks which is the longer term prospects not the next just couple of weeks but the next couple of months as we are now halfway through meteorological summer and to be honest it has been very poor and in today's video I want to investigate on the long term ECM the WF chart whether we could be seeing an improvement as of course it's been pretty unsettled but remarkably cool through June and especially so far through July so we'll start have a look at the CET reflecting on the summer so far and the year so far and then we'll have a look at the mean sea level anomalies again looking at the rough pressure patterns the ECMWF long run uh, ensembles do have and then looking at the corresponding temperatures as well. Now I have had a brief look through it and it does look like July could remain a below average month from the looks of these charts. But as we head into August, there are some tentative signs of warmer high pressure building in. Not only higher pressure building in, but that wind direction shifting, which means it's much more likely to be sustained because we have had the odd few, uh, odd warm day through summer so far, but nothing sustained. And that's what we could see through the second half of the summer. So make sure you stay tuned for the second half of the video for that. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link is in the description. Now, as I said, if we start on the Met Office CET, this is the mean Central England temperature, and it basically gives us a basis to compare month on month. It is the kind of average temperature that we get, so it takes into account colder nights, warmer days, can be skewed, of course, early in the month when there's a smaller data set, only a few days, and then it gets more and more accurate before we get a a complete total at the end of the month. Now, if we look at these bottom right chart here, uh, I know it's quite small. If we just click into that quickly, you can see this is the chart showing the Met Office CET from 1659 to 2023. And you can generally see the talk of global warming where we get into the 1900s. We start to see more warmer than average years before we do get uh, to uh, really, really warm uh, as we uh, as we head into the 2000s. So remember, this is based off the 19. 1961-1990 average. Of course, those cooler years back in the 1700s, 1800s, again, we can't say how accurate they are, but those cooler years would probably been more around average. It's because we are basing it off the average from 1961 to 1990. You could generally see the last few years, the overall year, have been a degree or above the uh, uh, above the 1991 2000 uh, 1990 mean. I just want that as a bit of a basis because if you look at the summer so far, June 0.1 degree below average and minus 1.6 for July, which is remarkably cold compared to the months earlier this year. Look at January 0.9 above average, four above average of February. February was incredibly mild. March 2.5, April 1.7, May 2.9. Uh, and yeah, pretty ridiculous indeed that the summer months have been basically as warm as May was. Uh, and May, yes, was a warm month, but I don't think anyone would say it was completely out of this world. Yes, by CET standards, it was. And I think that was all attributed to those uh, warmer nights we had as we had a lot of Atlantic systems moving in with milder air masses. Um, but you could just see, yeah, the summer so far has been very poor and it'll be incredibly interesting to see what the CET ends up throughout uh, the rest of July. Because if you have paid attention to some of the recent videos we've looked at, the second half of July could remain average or below average. And if it remains more though below average, it could push that CET towards two degrees below average, which is pretty uncharted territory for the past five years or so, especially for a summer month. Uh, yeah, pretty incredible indeed. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but just shows you that the summer so far, if you have noted it's been pretty cool and pretty uneventful, that is exactly what the statistics show. It's been cool um, and yeah, pretty poor indeed. But are we going to see an improvement? Now, this is the 500 HPA height um, week or weekly mean anomalies from the ECMWF. So this is a big run of ECMWF extended range ensembles all collated together to give us 
um, uh, anomaly charge. I mean, by low pressure, high pressure is generally from that ensemble suite. Of course, the longer we get out, the more variability is, is there's more uh, more variations within the individual ensemble members. But you can see this week, Monday the 15th to the 22nd, we can see exactly what we're getting. Atlantic systems, low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. Now, as I said, it's not been classic stormy low pressure systems it's more been troughs giving rise to heavy showers thunderstorms and you can see the high pressure has been across much of europe and here it's given much warmer dry conditions so unfortunately we're stuck in this cooler uh, pe pe period uh, and cooler kind of um, air mass that's coming in off the north atlantic but if you go into the following week Unfortunately, it continues. A flat westerly, high pressure to the south could nudge, nudge northwards, giving mild temperatures and dry conditions at times. But with that low, those blues to the north, we're unlikely to see anything particularly settled. Now that basically is to the end of July. Now as we head into early August, tentative signs, the blue weakens to our north towards Iceland and Greenland. The orange towards our south extends northwards. That is high pressure making more of an appearance. As we head into the first full week of August, high pressure starts to firmly take control. And then as we head into the uh, second full week, look at that high pressure right over the top of us. And then into the final uh, range, oh, final week of this extended range run, you can see their high pressure again fully over the top of us. So you can see it does look like July could continue to be pretty poor indeed. But tentative signs as we head into august things could get better and from my experience these charts are generally fairly accurate again the exact day-to-day -day weather it cannot predict um, but it can get the, the trends and i have found especially recently these of the weekly weekly anomalies have been fairly good with the trends when it says a colder period is going to come up it normally means some colder period is going to come up maybe not as dominating as these charts show again we had that earlier in the winter we saw colder spells just not as sustained as we thought they would be again these weekly anomalies did predict that maybe overdoing it a little bit but did predict that and that was the same with unsettled conditions earlier in the summer so hopefully they're correct once again and things are going to improve into august Another big thing we'll have to look at is the temperatures. And you can see this week, cool blues over much of the British Isles. And unfortunately, next week, it is the same, perhaps even a stronger signal. Um, so yeah, really pretty poor indeed. And then as we head into the following week, into early August, still blues around, but starting to approve. More mix with whites there, which is indicating average. And it's the first full week of August, warmer conditions into parts of southern England, Republic of Ireland, blue still in Scotland, and then it's the following week, um, red start to take over for all, and that's the same into the last week. So you can see, end of July looks like it's cool for all or below average, and then we transition back towards average into early August, and then to the kind of last two or three weeks of August, back towards above average. So could we see a backloaded summer here, where we see some very warm conditions in August and September? Real possibility. And we are kind of seeing that suggested here from these charts. I have to keep a very close eye on it, but it is a relatively positive signal. Now, the last thing we can have a look at is the precipitation, because it hasn't been completely record breaking for rain. We've not seen widespread flooding, but it has been pretty unsettled. You can see lots of greens around through this week, indicating lots of heavy rain, and that is what we are seeing. Yes, plenty of dry days over the next couple of days, but still, like on Monday to Tuesday, lots of heavy rain around, and the same could be said through the weekend into early next week. You can see, as we head into the uh, next week, higher pressure takes more of an influence, so even though it's cooler, still seeing some higher pressure. So again, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be that poor at the surface, even though the eastern of was pretty adamant on below average temperatures. Again, indicative of cooler air getting trapped under transient areas of high pressure. So it looks dry next week, which is good. And we've been seeing that from the GFS ensembles and the eastern of uh, ensembles, the, the ensembles where we look it's kind of two weeks ahead. We are seeing that. So good lining up from the models there. As we head into early August, greens to the north, more oranges to the south, again, indicating fairly dry patterns. Same could be said for the following week, week after that, and into the final week. Very weak anomalies, but still 
a drier anomaly nonetheless. So even though, yes, it is looking like low pressures to our north for much of the next couple of weeks, yes, we are going to see below average temperatures for the next couple of weeks, it does look like it is generally going to be average to below average in terms of the precipitation, which is a little bit counterintuitive. You'd have thought less precipitation would normally indicate higher temperatures because of higher pressure. But in this sort of scenario, I think because of the exact positioning of the high pressure, the tilt of that high pressure with the air mass coming in off the Atlantic, it just means that for the anomaly's sake, it will be below average temperatures. Still might be decent at the surface, still could get 20, 22 degrees with below average air masses and sunshine. So we'll have to wait and see. But you see the next couple of weeks doesn't look like it's gonna be continuing this changeable pattern. August though, tentative signs that something much better could be on the horizon. So make sure you do stay tuned to the videos because we will be looking at that over the next week or two if it does start to come into the weekly or couple of week time frame. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.